the drama the day I departed is divided into two parts the title itself is very interesting the day I departed from the literal meaning we can guess that the dear departed somebody who is dear to the family members or someone departed died but let's see whether that is true or not this drama the dear departed is a one act play but we need to understand what a play is look at this here a play is a piece of writing performed by actors in a theater or on television or radio now this is also called drama but this is one act play it means there are acts in the play so that is what happens in a play a play has some acts and those acts make a play and each act has some scenes at least one scene and maybe up to five scenes so we understand that a play has acts and each act has scenes what is a one act play a one act play is a play with one act and it has one or more scenes one act play okay let's look at the characters before we get into the details the characters are mrs amelia slater mrs elizabeth jordan henry slater ben jordan victoria slater abel merryweather now mrs amelia slater and mrs elizabeth are sisters mrs amelia and elizabeth are sisters henry slater is amelia's husband ben jordan is elizabeth's husband now victoria slater is a girl of 10 a 10 year old girl and she is amelia's daughter henry's daughter and we have another character called jimmy but jimmy has uh, no role played uh, in this drama actually this is uh, a short version actually an abridged version of the original drama so jimmy's character is not included but jimmy is mentioned at one point in part 1 Okay now that we have understood um, the basic characters let's try to uh, understand the relations i mean further relations uh, because we have two new people here henry slater and ben jordan coming into emily and elizabeth's lives now since these two are sisters what is the relation between henry and ben henry and ben are co-sons in law co-sons in law abel merryweather is the father in law of henry slater and ben jordan both these are co sons in law but before we get into the lesson we have to understand uh, about the dramatist the playwright look at this this man william stanley horton is a dramatist dramatist a person who writes plays for the theater television or radio the synonym is playwright dramatist playwright or the same now william stanley horton was a famous english dramatist he was one of the best of a group of realistic playwrights often called the manchester school in every play he sought to present an idea he had a remarkable gift for dialogue that is evident in the day departed the day departed was first produced in manchester in 1908 Here Horton satirizes the degradation of moral values in the British middle class. Now look at this here this playwright this dramatist sought to present an idea in every play sought means here looked for seek sought sought seek means to look for sought means looked for he tried to uh, present a different idea every time in every of uh, in every play now he has a remarkable gift remarkable gift for dialogue for creating dialogues now this remarkable gift means unusual and natural talent this man had that unusual and natural talent we also have another word here satirizes william stanley horton satirizes the degradation of moral values in the british middle class satirize means criticize what did he criticize or what does he criticize 
the degradation of moral values. What is degradation? The process by which something changes to a worse condition. So the human values, moral values were already bad and according to William Stanley Horton they were becoming worse. Moral values were becoming worse, bad, worse, worst. And he was actually um, criticizing the fact that moral values were going down in the society, especially British middle class. Now let's get into the lesson. Let me read out what you see on the screen and then we'll discuss. When the curtain rises, Mrs. Slater is seen laying the table. She is a vigorous, plump, red-faced, vulgar woman prepared to do any amount of straight talking to get her own way. She is in black. She goes to the window, opens it and calls into the street very sharply. Victoria? Victoria? Do you hear? Come in, will you? Victoria comes in. Mrs. Slater says again, I'm amazed at you, Victoria. I really am. Be off now and change your dress before your Aunt Elizabeth and Uncle Ben come. It would never do for them to find you in colors with Grandfather lying dead upstairs. Let's get back to this one. When the curtain rises, Mrs. Slater is seen laying the table. Now, lay the table means here to set the table, to arrange things on the table. Maybe she was setting up the dining table or something. She is a vigorous woman. Look at this word here. Vigorous, strong woman, energetic, plump, round and fat, red-faced, angry, vulgar woman. You know, vulgar people behave very badly and cruelly. So, vulgar woman prepared to do any amount of straight talking. Now, she was ready to argue with anyone to get what she wanted. She is in black means she is in black clothes. She goes to the window and calls uh, into the street. You know what happened. Now, she calls Victoria, who is playing in the street. Do you hear? Now, this one, do you hear? So, when we say uh, do you uh, very fast, it sounds like do you, do you hear? Do you hear? Do you know? So, do you understand? Like that. So, do you hear? Come in, will you? So, Victoria comes into the house. Now, Amelia says that she was really surprised, shocked at Victoria's behavior. Because, according to what Mrs. Slater tells, Victoria's uh, grandfather was lying dead upstairs. And that was the reason why Slater, Mrs. Slater or Amelia thought that it was not a good thing to be seen in colorful clothes. Actually, Victoria was wearing colorful clothes and she was playing outside. And Ben and Elizabeth were coming. Victoria's aunt Elizabeth and Uncle Ben were coming. And as uh, thought by Mrs. Slater, it would not look good to be seen in colorful clothes with a dead man in the house. Okay, that's why she said be off now means be away. Go away and change your clothes. Let's move on to the next slide. It would never do for them to find you in colors. What does this mean? It would not be good to be in colorful clothes and be seen by them. Here, them refers to Elizabeth and Ben Jordan. Let me read out the next ones. Victoria says, What are they coming for? They haven't been here for ages. Mrs. Slater says, They're coming to talk over poor grandpa's affairs. Your father sent them a telegram as soon as we found he was dead. A noise is heard. Henry Slater, a stooping heavy man with a drooping mustache, enters. He is wearing a black tailcoat, grey trousers, a black tie and a bowler hat. Henry says, I'm wondering if they'll come at all. When you and Elizabeth quarreled, she said she would never set foot in your house again. Mrs. Slater said, She'll come fast enough after her share of what her father has left. You know how hard she can be when she likes. Where she gets it from, I can't tell. Now Victoria asks a question, what are they coming for? It means, why are they coming, mother? They haven't been here for ages. Look at this, ages or for ages. This is an idiom. 
which means for a long time. So as said by Victoria, uh, Ben Jordan and uh, Elizabeth uh, have not been there in their house for ages. Mrs. Slater says, explains they are coming to talk over poor grandpa's affairs. Now grandpa's affairs mean here his property and, uh, and the things owned by him, all those things. Now they are coming to talk over. Now look at this talk over. This is a phrasal verb which means discuss. They are coming to discuss grandpa's affairs. Now here poor is used to show sympathy for that man because supposedly that man was dead. Okay, Henry sent a telegram as soon as they found him dead and Henry comes into the house. Now this, these lines describe uh, Henry Slater. Henry Slater was a stooping heavy man, stooping, bending. So people who has a stooping body they bend their bodies a bit with a drooping mustache drooping hanging maybe because they were long the mustache was long and that's why it was drooping he enters is wearing a black tailcoat it's a coat uh, which has a split at the at the waist level especially at the back now uh, he was wearing black tro gray trousers and a black tie and a bowler hat if you want to see a bowler hat, you can have a look at it here. This is bowler hat. It is also called derby hat. Now Henry has a doubt here. He thinks that uh, Elizabeth and Ben would not come. Especially Elizabeth would not come uh, to their house. Because last time when Amelia and Elizabeth had a quarrel, Elizabeth said that she would never set foot in the house again. Set foot in. Look at this here to enter or visit a place. Now Elizabeth said that she would not enter Amelia's house again, the Slater's house again. But Mrs. Slater has a different opinion. She thinks that Elizabeth comes fast enough to get her share of father's property, Abel Merriweather's property. And she also says that Elizabeth has hard nature hard nature. Now when she likes she can be very hard, she can be very tough. And Amelia also says where she gets it from I can't tell. Now here she refers to Elizabeth according to Mrs. Slater. Elizabeth has tough nature, hard nature and it refers to that hard nature and tough nature. She says that she doesn't know why Elizabeth behaves so. Let's move on. Henry says, I suppose it's in the family. Pause. Miss here, he stopped. And then immediately he said, Where are my slippers? Mrs. Slater, in the kitchen. But you want a new pair. Those old ones are nearly worn out. You don't seem to realize what it's costing me to bear up like I'm doing. My heart is fit to break, Henry, when I see the little trifles that belong to father lying around and think he'll never use them again very briskly. Here, you'd better wear these slippers off my father's now. It's lucky he had just got a new pair. Henry says, they'll be very small for me, my dear. Okay, now, Henry says, I suppose it's in the family. Actually, he's referring to the hard nature, the tough nature in the family. It's not just Elizabeth, as said by Amelia. It's the whole family that has this uh, tough attitude or tough nature. And he quickly recovered and then said, where are my slippers? And here is how she explained everything. Now, she said that the slippers were in the kitchen. Whose slippers were they? They were Henry's slippers. But she says that Henry's slippers are old and they are nearly worn out. Worn out. The main verb is worn out. That is actually wear out. Look at this here. Wear out is a phrasal verb which means become damaged or useless. Now, according to Mrs. Later, Henry's, uh, Henry's slippers were damaged. They were almost useless. And she also expresses her anxiety, her worry, her concern. She says, you don't seem to realize what it's costing me to bear up like I'm doing. Look at this bear up first. Bear up means to show courage and determination during difficult times. According to Mrs. Slater, that is Amelia, according to Amelia, she is trying very hard 
to show courage, determination, even though the times were difficult, even though they had difficult times. And she also says, my heart is fit to break when I see that little trifles that belong to father lying around. So trifles are not valuable, not important things. So things which are not valuable, which are not important. Now, she says that her heart is fit to break. It means she is upset and worried about the things, unimportant things and, and uh, not valuable things lying around. And she knew or maybe now she knows that father cannot use that any longer because he is dead according to her. Now you had better wear these slippers means you should wear these slippers. That's a piece of advice given by Amelia. But this Henry says, they'll be very small for me. Now Mrs. Slater says, they'll stretch, won't they? I'm not going to have them wasted. She has finished laying the table. Henry, I've been thinking about the bureau of my father's that's in his bedroom. You know, I always wanted to have it after he died. Now Henry says, you must arrange with Elizabeth when you are dividing things up. Mrs. Slater says, Elizabeth is that sharp, she'll see I am after it. And we'll drive a hard bargain over it. Henry says, perhaps she's got her eye on the bureau as well. Mrs. Slater says, she's got her eye on the bureau as well. Now Mrs. Slater says, they'll stretch. What are they here? Abel's slippers, new slippers. They'll stretch. Because he said the slippers was, were, were too small for his uh, feet, she said that they would stretch if you, if you put them on. And she also said that she did not want to get them wasted. Okay, now, bureau. Now, anyway, uh, we have to look at this stretch if you don't understand it. This is it, stretch. Now, bureau. This is bureau. Bureau is a desk with drawers. You can look at uh, the explanation board here. A desk with drawers. Now this is the desk and you have drawers here. You can draw them out, put something in or take something out and then pull in the drawer. Now she said that she always wanted to get the bureau. Uh, but Henry advised her to talk to Elizabeth and divide things up. Here, Amelia thought that Elizabeth is that intelligent, so intelligent that she will easily understand that Amelia was after the bureau. It means here, Amelia wants to have the bureau. Henry says, perhaps she has got her eye on the bureau as well. He thinks that maybe she wants to have the bureau. Mrs. Slater says, she's got her eye on the bureau as well. She just repeated Henry's words so to, to actually agree with what Henry said. Now drive a hard bargain. Here Amelia also said that once, Amelia, once Elizabeth understands that um, Amelia wants to have the bureau, she also wants to have the bureau and then there will be a hard bargain. So when you drive a hard bargain, you demand a lot or you refuse to give too much when you are making an agreement. So it means they are going to uh, argue over that bureau. The next one. Mrs. Slater says, she's, she's now been here since father bought it. If it was only down here instead of in his room, she'd never guess it wasn't our own. Henry, startled. Amelia, he rises. Mrs. Slater says, Henry, why shouldn't we bring that bureau down here now? We can do it before they come. Henry was stupefied. I wouldn't care to. Mrs. Slater said, don't look so daft, Henry. Why not? Henry says, it doesn't seem delicate somehow. Mrs. Slater, we could put that shabby old chest of drawers upstairs where the bureau is now. Elizabeth could have that and welcome. I've always wanted to get rid of it, Henry. She points to the drawers. Now, Mrs. Slater says she has not been here since father bought it. She here is Elizabeth. Now, according to Amelia, Elizabeth um, ha had never come since father bought it. Had never come to their house since father bought it. So, 
she had no idea whether that was Abel Merriweather's uh, bureau or Henry's bureau, I mean uh, Slater's bureau. That's why she wanted to bring that bureau down before they came. Henry was actually surprised and he stood up. Mrs. Slater says uh, to Henry that they can do it before they come. Henry is stupefied, again surprised and he said that he was not interested in doing it doing that, I mean bringing the bureau down. Mrs. Slater called him silly, stupid and she asked him why they couldn't do it. Henry says, it doesn't seem delicate. This is an interesting point. It doesn't seem delicate. Here he's not talking about uh, the bureau and uh, maybe the, fra the fragile um, nature of bureau the weak nature of bureau. He's not talking about that. Actually, he's talking about the act. The word delicate is used about uh, the act of stealing the bureau. According to Henry, stealing the bureau was not a sensible thing to do. Look at this here. Stealing the bureau is not a sensible thing, is not a wise thing to do. It was not morally correct. But Amelia says that um, they could put that shabby old chest of drawers. Shabby here means, look at this here, shabby, poor in condition. So they had an old chest of drawers, an old box of drawers, an old box with drawers, and that was in poor condition. They want, they want to put this uh, old chest of, not they actually, Amelia wants to put that old chest of drawers in the place of bureau and bring the bureau downstairs. And she also uh, thought that Elizabeth could have that shabby old chest of drawers and she would welcome. Welcome means yeah, she would be very happy to have that. And Amelia also said that she always wanted to get rid of, get rid of what? It means here that shabby old chest of drawers. She always wanted to get rid of it. She always wanted to throw it away because she did not want it. Get rid of is an idiom which means throw away something you do not want. Here she wanted to throw away this old chest of drawers. Let's move on. Now Henry says, suppose they come when we are doing it. Mrs. Slater says, I'll fasten the front door. Get your coat off, Henry. We'll change it. Mrs. Slater goes out to fasten the front door. Henry takes his coat off. Mrs. Slater reappears. Mrs. Slater, I'll run up and move the chairs out of the way. Victoria appears, dressed according to her mother's instructions. Victoria says, What have you got your coat off for, father? Henry says, Mother and I are going to bring grandpa grandfather's bureau down here. Victoria, Are you planning to pinch it? Henry, shocked, he said, no, my child, Grandpa gave it to your mother before he died. Victoria says, this morning? Yes. Now Henry says, suppose they come when we are doing it here. They refers to Elizabeth and Ben. Mrs. Slater assured that she, she would fasten the front door. Fasten means here lock or close the front door. And she also asked him to get his coat off. Get coat off. Okay, this get your coat off means remove your coat. Now she fastens the front door, she locks the front door and then Henry removes the coat and Mrs. Slater comes back. And Mrs. Slater here said that she would run up and move the chairs out of the way. Victoria comes back dressed according to her mother's instructions. Now we learned earlier that uh, Amelia asked her to change her dress. Now Amelia, came, sorry, Victoria came back. Now Victoria has a doubt. She asked her father why he removed his coat. And he said that Victoria's mother and <coughs> Henry were going to bring grandfather's bureau down here. Now Victoria sensed that there was something wrong and that's why she asked whether they were planning to pinch the bureau. Pinch means here bureau. Henry was really shocked to have a question uh, from Victoria, a question like that. He understood that a girl of just 10 years old could understand what was happening there. After all, Victoria was a precocious girl, very intelligent girl. Victoria said, this morning, 
grandpa gave it to your mother gave it to mother this morning henry said yes now victoria said ah oh, he was drunk this morning mrs later appears carrying a handsome clock under her arm mrs later i thought i would fetch this down as well she puts it on the mantelpiece our clock is worth nothing and this always appealed to me victoria that's grandpa's clock be quiet it's ours now come henry lift your end henry and mrs later very hot and flushed stagger in with a pretty old fashioned bureau containing a locked desk they put it where the chest of drawers was and straighten the ornaments etc there is a knock at the door the knocking is repeated victoria says ah oh, he was drunk this morning now her idea was that maybe abel merryweather gave it to the mother gave the bureau to her mother in a drunken state unknowingly now mrs later comes back uh, carrying a handsome clock under her arm actually she went upstairs to move the chairs out of the way so that they could easily bring the bureau down but when coming back she uh, brought the handsome clock that was in abel mary weather's room and she said this i wanted to fetch this down as well fetch means here bring i wanted to bring this clock as well and she puts it on the mantelpiece mantelpiece is a shelf above a fireplace now in cold countries like uh, like britain there are uh, fireplaces in the house uh, inside the rooms and then uh, the, above the fireplace there is a shelf and you can put something there mantelpiece she also said our clock is worth nothing and this uh, this always appealed to me our clock is worth nothing means here our clock is useless and this clock always appealed to me appealed means here attracted this clock always attracted me now victoria said that it was grandpa's clock but mrs later asked her to be quiet and then they start carry they started carrying uh, the bureau and henry and mrs later were very hot and flushed flushed I mean they they were red I means here their faces were red because they were carrying heavy bureau they stagger in what is stagger It means walk unsteadily they were walking unsteadily because they were carrying a heavy bureau and that bureau was old fashioned one it has or it had a locked desk and they put the bureau in the place of chest of drawers and they started uh, straightening the ornaments i mean adjusting the ornaments that moved the decorative pieces and there is a knock on the door it means somebody knocked on the door the knocking is repeated let's move on to the next one Victoria assures in Ben and Mrs Jordan the latter is a stout complacent woman with an irritating air of being always right she is wearing an outfit of new mourning ben is also in complete new mourning he is rather a jolly little man but at present trying to adapt himself to the regrettable occasion mrs jordan sails into the room and solemnly goes straight to mrs later and kisses her the men shake hands Mrs Jordan says well Amelia and so is gone at last Mrs Slater says yes he has gone he was 72 a fortnight last sunday she sniffs back a tear ben chirpily now amelia you mustn't give way we have all got to die sometime or other mrs jordan says and now perhaps you'll tell us all about it Now Victoria assures in. Let's see what assure mean first. Assure means to show way in or into something, or welcome somebody in. Now Victoria showed the way into the house. Showed Ben and Mrs Jordan into the house. The latter is a stout, complacent woman. The latter is the second of the two people mentioned here. now who are the two people mentioned here ben and mrs jordan the first one is ben and the second one is mrs jordan the latter is the second person it means mrs jordan so the latter is a stout 
complacent woman. It means Mrs. Jordan is a stout woman, a bit fat, complacent woman. Complacent means self-satisfied, pleased with the things, pleased with whatever is happening now. Now, oh no, I forgot to mention this. The latter is the second person mentioned and the former is the first of the two persons or two people mentioned. Now, if you have the former here, it refers to Ben because that is the, I mean, Ben is the first person mentioned here. But here we used the latter here. It means it refers to Mrs. Jordan. Now, this Mrs. Elizabeth was a woman with an irritating air of being always right. Now, air, let's see what it is. Air is manner or attitude. She always had this attitude and that attitude was irritating to other people, annoying to other people. Now, what was that attitude? She always thought that she was always correct. She was always right. She is wearing an outfit of new morning. Outfit is nothing but clothes, dress of new morning. Now, morning is actually sadness over someone's death. The sadness that we show over someone's death. But in some countries, when they show mourning because somebody has died in their family or in their close relations, they wear black clothes. Now here Elizabeth is wearing black clothes to show mourning, to show sadness over Abel's death. Ben is also in complete new mourning. He is actually a jolly little man, jolly happy man, but at present, currently he is trying to adapt himself to the occasion, a regrettable occasion. Adapt to means adjust to. He was trying to adjust to uh, the sad occasion now. Regrettable occasion is a sad occasion because Abel Meriwether died, his father-in-law. Mrs. Jordan sails into the room. Sail into means move into. Sails into moves into. She moves into the room and very seriously goes straight to Mrs. Slater and kisses her. Now men shake hands. Okay, now uh, Amelia here says that, no, uh, Mrs. Jordan says that he, Abel, has gone at last. Here, gone means here, Abel has died at last. Mrs. Slater says, yes, he has gone. He was 72 a fortnight last Sunday. He was 72 years old and a fortnight. Fortnight means two weeks. So, approximately 15 days. She sniffs back a tear. Now, Ben sharply says, now, Amelia, you mustn't give way. Now, he interfered very quickly and said, you mustn't give way, Amelia. Give way means here, become emotional. Amelia, you must not become emotional. You know, we've all got to die sometime or other. Don't worry. He tried to console uh, Amelia. And now Mrs. Jordan asked Amelia to tell them how it happened. I mean, how Abel died. Let's look at the next slide. Mrs. Slater said, Father had been merry this morning. He went out soon after breakfast to pay his insurance. Ben says, my word, it's a good thing he did. Mrs. Jordan says, He always was thoughtful in that way. He was too honorable to have gone without paying his premium. Henry says, And when I came in, I found him undressed, sure enough, and snug in bed. Mrs. Slater says, And when we had finished dinner, I thought I would take up a bit of something and a tray. He was lying there for all the world as if he was asleep. So I put the tray down on the bureau on the chest of drawers and went to waken him. He was quite cold. A pause. They wiped their eyes and sniffed back tears. Now, Mrs. Slater says that, uh, I mean, she said that her father had been very happy that morning and he went, went out soon after breakfast to pay his insurance premium. When Ben realized that uh, Abel Merriweather had paid the insurance premium, he said that it was a very good thing. He exclaimed saying that it was a very good thing Abel had done. Actually, he was talking positively about Abel Merriweather. He thought that he had really paid the insurance premium. Now Henry said, And when I came in, I found him undressed, sure enough, and snug in bed. Now Abel Merriweather was lying in his bed, snug in bed. Now snug means warm and comfortable, lying close with the legs close to the body. 
Now, Mrs. Slater uh, continued explaining how it happened, how they found him dead. Uh, she actually went up uh, to give him something to eat. She took something on a tray and but uh, when she saw this man lying there for all the world as if he was asleep. For all the world as if means exactly like. Let's replace this with exactly like. He was lying there exactly like he was asleep. So Amelia put the tray down. She said she put the tray down on the bureau, but the bureau is now downstairs, but she uh, revealed the truth. She spoke the truth actually. Actually, she put the tray on the bureau. That's why in a flow, she said the same thing. But now the bureau is downstairs. So she corrected and then said, uh, on the chest of drawers. And then they wiped their eyes and then sniffed back tears. Next one. Mrs. Slater said, rising briskly at length, in a business-like tone, Well, will you go up and look at him now, or shall we have tea? What do you say, Ben? I'm not particular. Mrs. Jordan, looking at the table, Well, then, uh, if the kettle is ready, we may as well have tea first. Mrs. Slater puts the kettle on the fire and gets tea ready. Henry says, One thing we may as well decide now is the announcement in the papers. Mrs. Jordan says, I was thinking of that. What would you put? A pause. They stop talking for a moment. Mrs. Jordan says, well, we'll think about it after tea. And then we'll look through his bits of things and make a list of them. There's all the furniture in his room. Now, Mrs. Slater speaks in a business-like tone. Rising briskly, means she started getting up very quickly, but she took some time and stood up completely at length at length means here for a long time she actually started quickly but slowed down and then continued standing up it means she took some time maybe two to three seconds to stand and she spoke in a business-like tone it means as if she were uh, speaking in a business meeting and she asked him whether they would like to see the dead body or how tea first and Elizabeth Jordan asked Ben's opinion, but Ben said he was not particular about it. Now we understand that this Ben was a man with no uh, no self-respect or no individuality. That's why he was actually uh, saying okay to everything uh, his wife said. We also learned that uh, Henry was also, uh, I mean Henry also behaved in the same way. He could not say no to um, Amelia's suggestion to steal the bureau. And Mrs. Jordan looked at the table and then she decided to have tea first. And they started talking about what to put in the newspapers. I mean, the announcement to be made in the newspapers. What do you think is the announcement that they wanted to put in the newspapers? It was the announcement about Abel's death. And Mrs. Jordan said that she was also thinking of the same announcement in the newspapers. And they, I mean, Elizabeth asked, what would you put in the announcement? But they also decided not to uh, discuss that now. They wanted to discuss that after tea. And then after having tea, they wanted to look through his bits, Abel's bits of things. It means here, all his things. Look through means here, look for or search for. They wanted to search for his bits of things make a list of them because they felt that I mean Elizabeth felt that there was uh, furniture in his room a lot of furniture in the room by the way this word furniture is always singular furniture is chairs tables etc next one Henry says there's no jewelry or valuables of that sort Mrs. Jordan says except his gold watch he promised that to our Jimmy Mrs. Slater says, promise you, Jimmy, I never heard of that. Oh, but he did, Amelia, when he was living with us. He was very fond of Jimmy. Well, I don't know. Anyhow, there's his insurance money. Have you got the receipt for the premium he paid this morning? Mrs. Slater says, I've not seen it. Victoria jumps up from the sofa and comes behind the table. Victoria says, Mother, I don't think Grandpa went to pay his insurance premium this morning. 
Mrs. Leto says, we went out. Henry says, there is no jewelry or valuables. They started discussing his property, Abel's property, Abel's things already. Now, Mrs. Jordan thinks that uh, there was no valuable thing except gold watch. And then the gold watch was promised to Jimmy. Now, actually, we don't know whether it really happened, but she booked it like that. She was so clever that she could easily manage it. And Mrs. Slater had a doubt and that's why she expressed the same doubt. Promised you, Jimmy, I never heard of that. And Elizabeth confirmed saying that uh, Abel had promised to give that gold watch to Jimmy because he was very fond of Jimmy. Fond of means here he liked Jimmy very much according to Mrs. Jordan. But Mrs. Slater did not believe that anyway. But Ben intervened, interfered and said, uh, he mentioned insurance money and he asked about the receipt for the premium. You know when you pay a premium or bill or something, you get a receipt. Now they were trying to look for the receipt now. But Victoria said that her grandfather did not go out uh, that morning. But Mrs. Slater felt that he went out. Let's see what happened. Victoria says, yes, but he didn't go into the town. He met old Mr. Tattersall down the street and they went off past St. Philip's Church. Do you think he hasn't paid it? Was it overdue? Ben's opinion. Mrs. Slater says, I should think it was overdue. Mrs. Jordan, something tells me he has not paid it. Ben says, the drunken old beggar. Mrs. Jordan says, he has done it on purpose, just to annoy us. Mrs. Slater after all I've done for him, having to put up with him in the house these three years. It's nothing short of swindling. Mrs. Jordan, I had to put up with him for five years. Mrs. Slater, and you were trying to turn him over to us all the time. Now here they were discussing um, whether there was this receipt uh, for insurance premium or not. But Victoria um, told them that uh, Abel Merriweather went to his friend Mr. Tattersall and went down uh, to Saint, towards St. Philip's Church but not into the town. Now Ben doubted that maybe it was overdue, the bill was overdue, the premium was overdue. What does that mean? If something is overdue, a bill or premium is overdue, it's not paid by the expected time. You know, if that was not paid by the expected time, they would not get the insurance money. Now, Mrs. Slater also felt the same thing. Jordan felt the same thing. That was why Ben called him the drunken old beggar. Now, he was really annoyed. He was really disappointed because he knew that he would not get that insurance premium now because Abel had not paid as there was no report, I mean, as there was no receipt. Now, you can understand the, the statement made by, or maybe the remark made by Ben earlier. He said, it's a good thing Abel Merriweather did. When he realized that Abel had paid the insurance premium, he said it was a good thing. But when he realized that Abel had not paid the premium, he said, the drunken old beggar. He called Abel drunken old beggar. And Mrs. Elizabeth thought that, Abel had done this on purpose. What do you think he had done on purpose? It means he had not paid the premium on purpose. On purpose means deliberately, intentionally. Now he wanted to do that. He did not want to pay that. So he did not pay according to them. And they started discussing that they spent a lot of time or they took great care of him. but. Uh, he did um, something like this. Now, Mrs. Slater felt that it's nothing short of swindling. Swindling means cheating. Nothing short of means not less than. Now, Abel's act of not paying the insurance premium was not less than cheating. It means it was equal to cheating. Now, they felt that Abel Merriweather had cheated them by not paying the insurance premium. Now, Mrs. Jordan said, I had to put up with him for five years. Put up with means tolerate, bear. I looked after, I tolerated that man even though he was unpleasant and difficult to deal with. 
I did that for five years. And Mrs. Later said that Elizabeth was always trying to send Abel to Slater's house. All those five years, she was trying to send Abel back to uh, Slater's house. Now Mrs. Slater said, Victoria, run upstairs and fetch that bunch of keys that's on your grandpa's dressing table. Victoria, very timidly, in grandpa's room? Yes, I, I don't like to... Don't talk so silly. There's no one who can hurt you. Victoria goes out reluctantly. We'll see if he has locked the receipt up in the bureau. Ben said, In where? In this thing? He rises and examines it. Mrs. Jordan says, also rising, Where did you pick that up, Amelia? It's new since last I was here. They examine it closely. Oh, Henry picked it up one day. Victoria returns very scared. She closes the door after her. Victoria says, Mother, Mother, Mrs. Lett. What is it, child? Now, we understand that Amelia asked Victoria to go and go upstairs and bring the bunch of keys, you know, a collection of keys that's on Grandpa's dressing table. But she initially she was very afraid and she did not want to go into the room. And she expressed the same thing. But Mrs. Letter uh, shut her down and then asked her to go and bring the bunch of keys. Actually, she was trying to find if the receipt was there in the bureau. Now, Ben first time looked at, uh, for the first time, Ben looked at bureau and he was interested and he asked uh, Amelia where they had got that from. And Mrs. Slater said that Henry picked it up one day. Picked it up. Pick up means here buy something especially cheaply. Now, Mrs. Slater said that Henry bought that bureau maybe somewhere. Victoria returns very scared. She was very frightened and she closes the door. I mean, Abel Merriweather's door after her and Mrs. Later asked her what it was. Let's see what happened now. Victoria says, Grandpa is getting up. Ben, what? Mrs. Later, what do you say? Victoria, Grandpa is getting up. Mrs. Jordan, the child is crazy. Mrs. Slater, don't talk so silly, Victoria. Don't you know your grandpa is dead? No, no, he's getting up. I saw him. They are transfixed with amazement. Victoria clings to Mrs. Slater. Ben says, listen. They look at the door. A slight chuckling is heard from upstairs. The door opens, revealing an old man clad in a faded but gay dressing gown. He is in his stocking feet. Although over 70, he is vigorous and well-colored. His bright, malicious eyes twinkle under his heavy, reddish-gray eyebrows. He is obviously either the old man Abel Merriweather or else his ghost. Now here Ben and Amelia and Elizabeth, all of them reacted um, in, in surprise. But Victoria confirmed that Grandpa was getting up. But Mrs. Jordan felt that she was crazy. Child was crazy. Maybe she went mad. Look at this here. Crazy. Mentally ill. Maybe Elizabeth thought that the child, Victoria, went crazy. Went mad. Mrs. Slater uh, wanted, to, wanted Victoria to confirm. But she said that he was getting up. And Ben alerted all the people there. And then actually he said, Sst. This is the word that we use to uh, attract attention, draw the attention of other people. He said, listen, because he heard something. They were all transfixed. I mean, they stopped moving in amazement. And Victoria goes and clings Mrs. Slater, hugs Mrs. Slater. They look at the door. A slight chuckling is heard. Now, chuckling is quiet laugh, silent laugh. Is heard from the upstairs. The door opens showing revealing means showing showing an old man clad clad means dressed an old man dressed in a faded but gay dressing gown faded means here look at this word here dull looking maybe the color uh, faded a bit 
dull looking color but gay dressing gown here gay means attractive so it was attractive dressing gown he is in his stocking feet it means he had socks on his feet but no shoes he is in his stocking feet although he is over 70 years old he is vigorous we discussed this word vigorous means strong and energetic and well color his bright malicious eyes twinkle under his no malicious eyes actually no uh, harm intended here malicious means unkind and cruel but his eyes look like that very serious unkind and cruel now they twinkle they shine under his heavy reddish gray eyebrows now look at this here eyebrow this is not eyebrow 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 so eyebrows is obviously undoubtedly clearly apparently either the old man Abel Merriweather or it's his ghost no ghost is the spirit of a dead person it might be the real Abel Merriweather or else the spirit of Abel okay that's the end of part one I hope you have uh, enjoyed uh, listening to this lesson if you like this lesson please um, share it like it and then subscribe if you haven't already done that i'll see you in the next part thank you for watching